Hi, today we're going to paint this painting. If you want to paint alongside me, I'm going to add the photos and the drawing the links below. If you've got any questions, just ask in the comments. Let's get to it. Black, phthalo blue. I'm going to put some white out and I'm going to put an acridone magenta and I'm going to put the yellow. And these are quite glazy colours as well. It's quite nice to limit your palette to about five. If we mix the black and the blue, I think that that's going to be perfect for our penguins. Those are quite nice colours for those penguins, I think. And then if you actually add more of the white, you've got these really nice, quite nice colours here as well. And we can go much whiter and get more of that sky colour. Also, the red and the yellow mix to get a really good orange. There we go. I'm mixing the white, the blue and the red. I'm not aiming for the really light sky colour. I'm not worried if there's slightly different shades thinking in my head mid-tone rather than the brightest bright or the, uh, the darkest dark. We're going to be working a lot of detail on the penguins more than anything. There's not going to be that much detail in the background. That's our first layer and then I'm going to be painting some of these mountains in the background. When I'm doing the sky I'm wanting to get a reasonably even colour up here and now I'm just doing the blending. This can be behind the penguins. And then, and then there's something coming down here on the drawing as well. This is just going to be snow. I'm going to do snow shadows, but I am going to put a little bit of colour here. It just gives you an idea of where we're going. Purple here. Get your mountains down, do your sky, get a little bit of foreground in and then at this point you can do a little bit more on the mountains. That sky is done, finished. First of all, I just wanted to show some of the techniques I've used for these mountains, the light coming in from this side and having the dark side. And I've exaggerated that quite a lot here. What happens is it looks like the light is hitting the mountains. You can just see it, can't you? But in order to get these really bright patches and the really dark patches, I've used a palette knife to do it. So I thought I would just show you on a spare bit of paper. I only used for the background the phthalo blue, the quinacridone magenta and the white generally. I'm not saying there was never any black added. I've got a colour that's a mix of the white, the blue, the red. I'm just going to put in the shape of a mountain. If you want you can use all sorts of shapes to inspire you and then the dead simple thing is, I put some dark colours on the one side, darker colours, 
the darker colours are basically not using the white. Sometimes by adding in a touch of the red, that can make it very dark. So I've only added a little touch of red. And what I was doing was I was working to the edge quite dark. And then I've just cleaned out my brush and I'm just blending. It was done in layers. Let me just do that because it's going over the top. And then I'm cleaning out my brush and then I'm blending. So this is underneath, yeah? So you can see instantly you've got the light hitting something, yeah? Once it's dry, I've used the palette knives. And I've gone in quite strong. So that is, I've used that you, you just sort of line up the edge of your palette knife. I, I quite like this for some things. I've added it with this, but you can also use it. This is a painting knife and pick up the texture of the canvas. You can literally do that as well. So you need to play with it a little bit. If this was on your palette, you can flatten your knife. Then you can pick up your bead on the side that you're going to be using. And you can do this. And I've used a very, very similar technique to provide the texture at the front. So I've put colour underneath and then I have applied some paint and then I have gone over it to get the texture. So if you imagine there's colour underneath, you can get quite a lot of texture with that. It doesn't have to all be light and dark on one side, but just consider you're doing less on one side than the other. If you notice here, I have put a little bit of darker texture on top as well. So I haven't just done this white at the front. So it started with the blue, this sort of medium blue, and then I worked on top and I've got lighter and I've particularly tried to get the light at this edge here, because again, I'm trying to, to differentiate between this foreground part and this middle ground, this is the middle ground but I have put some dark in here. So I think that that explains it. Now, the next stage is let's get these penguins in and I'm not going to go completely black because when you, when you look at this black and white version and you look at this, it is a bluey black and the bluey black is gonna go much better with our painting. I will try and, and retain knowledge of where those eyes are. It doesn't really matter where you start. I'm going to put the white and the black in. I'm not going to worry about any of these little marks. We're going to be doing them later. So I'm just going to be worrying about tone. I've put on your drawing areas of shape. If you actually look, this area of shape is basically really dark. And I've indicated areas where you're going to have to alter the tone. There's a tiny little bit of, of the blue showing through. It's bringing in some of the background as well. Don't worry about these little white lines. If you don't cover them, they'll come off later when it's dry with just a bit of water. But it's not the end of the world because if, it's the, if you do something wrong, then you can just go over it. It's not, it's not a big deal. Um, but this is all black down here. I'm going slightly, it's got this got a little bit of white in on this side, but it's very, very small amount. As I'm going to each little bit, I'm checking, I'm making sure the drawing's right. Getting that shape right. But then whilst it's wet, I'm wanting to blend. I could go really quite dark and still have the effect. I'm going to go a little bit lighter there because of the tone that I'm seeing. So I'm going a little bit lighter. You can probably hardly see it, the difference. Because we still want to be working very, very dark because we're going to be putting lighter colours on top. Okay, so you're getting the idea. Here we're going a lot lighter. 
I still want it to be darker than it is. This here, we've got this elbow and that is quite important if you see that and you don't want to lose that for certain. And it just comes a tiny bit below there and you can actually work it out and line it up and make sure you're getting this right. But essentially you've got this line going like this and then it's going to about there, yeah? And I could start moving a lot, lot quicker at this point. Just bear in mind what you don't want to lose. So you start to get the idea. And the other thing you can do is whilst everything's still quite wet and it is gonna be wet at this point, you can just clean out your brush. It's just damp now. And you can just blend it in then as well. That's the other thing you can do. So you can start blending things. I've got these lines and we're gonna have lighter lines going in there. Time consuming, but really enjoyable. And that's, there's a lighter little bit here. But if you notice, not as light as that. And so even if you get the slight tone wrong, you don't want to get the tone or differences wrong. So can you see how that's starting to build up? And this is the same if it's a face, an animal, anything where you've got these contours and what you start to do is you're not looking at a face you're looking at the shapes and where the light's hitting the faces and the tone it's shape and tone shape tone shape tone i want to do the head it's really really black so i'm going to you look this is a huge brush for the head I'm just going to use this brush, which is the number two Rosemary Shiraz. It means that I've got a lot of control here because this is going to be almost a finished. I've still put blue in it, but not a lot really. I'm going to leave a little bit where the eye is just so I can see where the eye is. We might need a couple of layers because obviously there's white under here. It's covering quite well already. And here I've got some difficulty with being able to see the drawing. I've got to be looking and seeing whether it actually looks right. I do want to do some of the other colour mixes because you're doing the under layer. So we've got yellow and red. And it's almost there's some of it that is more yellowy. So I've got a little range of colour here that I can work at. You may need for this a couple of cover covers because, can you see that? I might even need to cover first with a touch of white. So that's got white in it because of yellow not covering very well to speed things up sometimes it's good to put a touch of white but I don't really want a lot of white in the paint mix so you may need to just do that a little bit underneath it depends what you've got underneath really so I'll start to build that up and I think you'll need a couple of layers of this it'll get brighter and brighter you can see the colors we're using the quinacridone magenta is translucent it's it's see-through so you can actually see that there and that's why sometimes the idea of putting a layer of the white which you can also let dry will speed things up because you what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to get that colour in and if I mix the red in now which is quite a bright red here it's not going to work properly until it's it's going to work but it's just not going because it's mixing with the white so there might be a little bit of put of deciding where you're wanting these bright, bright colours and then 
putting a white on and I'm just going to work around the back here with the black and just sort of filling in a little bit. So I'm just thinking what other tips you need. The, the obviously round here we're going to be going lighter again with the black but can you see that this isn't the finished likeness at all it's not the finished color it's not going to be because even though we're, we're going to get lighter and lighter this area it's got touches of blues in in places and it's got touches of yellows in so this has got yellow in here It will reflect what's around it. As we're coming down here, I'm wanting it to be more picking up on some of the blue that this has got some of this colour in here now as we're coming down here. Oh, it's not obvious because it's very, very subtle. I'm applying some of the colours from here into the white down where there's more shadow area. So it's not that obvious at the moment, but I think the more that we do, the more obvious it will become. So. There's a little bit of white here. But you'll see, because that's got a bit of blue, the blue in it. But can you see how I'm needing layers? Needs layers because of the dark colour underneath. So this has got the yellow in and this has got more of a blue in down here and that's the bright white. So it's not that obvious yet, but it will become more obvious. Here I'm being a little bit more cautious because I really do want these like white bits to be coming through quite significantly and I've, I've put loads of little V's on the drawing so I think I'm just going to try and imitate that as I'm painting it rather than reinvent the wheel and have to do it on top. I'm looking a lot, I'm going back and forth to the painting, back and forth with my head. You can't see it, but I am. And, and you can see that that's starting to imitate it already. Don't worry if you don't get shadows and things in straight away. Now, can you see this is the next layer? Can you see how much better it's covering? It is coming together. And you'll look up and you, or you'll stand back from your painting and you'll go, oh yeah, that works. But I've put some white underneath this colour and then I'm mixing up an orange but you can if you look you can get fairly varied set of colours from just the yellow and red and not using white in the top colour but I am using white underneath you could start with a yellow and really what I'm doing is it's like little glazes going over and where it's darker putting touches of the reds coming in but you won't get that coverage in the one cover if you've missed something and you've gone over with a dark color then what you can do is you can go back over with the white and then go back in now i make sure that if you've got some white in your brush you clean out your brush in between and for the top layers, I'd be inclined not to use white. It will just get brighter and brighter and it will start to become more and more luminescent. This is a little bit of a patience game. You're getting a realistic effect. I want to start working on how we actually get this leathery effect. In the same way as fur, it's to do with direction and colour. I've got quite a fine brush here, but it's not incredibly fine. Again, it's a, it's a layering thing, just sort of making little V shapes. And then I'll go back with, with almost a white, they're lighter all the time, in the same way as we work on feathers anywhere. So this is actually quite dark in this area and I've probably gone a little bit too far with it, but that's okay. 
because what we can do there is I can just go back in with my dark. If it looks white, I'm really using grey. So it's the black, the blue and the white. It might have to be a little bit wetter. You know, the same as you do. I'm going to show you this. I'm still using this because I've got a lovely point on this. But you'll get to a point where you perhaps want to get smaller uh, again. But when you're doing whiskers or something fine like this, what you want to do is add a little bit more water. You're going to be able to get a little bit more fine detail. We can load the brush and we've got a little bit more water in there. You can do this much more easily and it will go for a lot longer as well. That makes sense. Right. And then I can just dot, 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 space them out more as you get further up and try and do them in the right direction. I feel like it's, it's quite difficult at this point for me because what I feel like doing at this point is going really quiet and just concentrating. And when you're talking in class, that's not quite so, so easy to do. But you're getting the picture of getting more and more, building it up, building it up. If you find that it's too blue, you can always put a touch of the, the red here. Now, I know that sounds a bit strange, but you've got a lot of purples here and purpley blues. And the way that you can get that sort of blue back in is to add the red in. You may have to do that as well. Now here, remember that these bits here will rub off because they're still the uh, trace down, right? But they give us an idea of where we're going. And you just do little horizontal strokes. I thought it was really short of patience, but I do quite enjoy doing this. I feel like it's a bit like a jigsaw or that sort of thing. And I've given myself an idea from the trace down of the curve and I'm literally just going little little strokes you can do this just by looking at your photograph and if you're doing it yourself and you're just looking at the direction that it goes in this isn't going to be a completed painting by the end of the network because this is going to take time but it's enjoyable and I will definitely complete it to show you. We want to try and make this a parallel thing. So although there's not a line there, I'm going to just carry on with that line. Okay, that, so that has given me an indication of where I'm going. But I am going to do another one as well. Another line that isn't there. But I'm using the first line of the guide. Can you see how that's working? And then it's more so down here. These get closer. So you can start getting faster. I say faster because I'm not being quite so precise here. It's becoming more like little dots. But I'm still getting the same direction, the same, that sort of thing. But you can work that in and you just work your colours so it's colour tone direction, colour tone direction, colour tone direction. Up here, it's gone lighter again. If you go wrong there, like there's a bit of a blob there, then it's fine. Just go back in with the colour that's underneath and then just, just touch it up and paint it back out again. Up here, there's a line. And so what I'm doing is I'm getting the tonal shapes in again, just working it out where the tonal shapes are and getting the colours. And this top part is so fine. I'm just, just giving an indication of what's behind just by doing that. Does that make sense? And just it's just to do with shape and tone more than anything. So I'm just going to do that. This dark comes back down here. I wish I'm going to just work a little bit to that line for a minute so I'm working but it's the same principle it's looking at the direction and just dotting the direction in. that's what I'm doing 
I'm going in even lighter now. I can do it a little bit at a time. You're not sure how dark. See the point there? See how, how blobby that was? That's because I haven't got a very good point. So I'm rolling the brush. It makes for a better point there. There's water there. So I'm going to dab off on the, the metal part. Make sure that I have got that control. And then we'll go back in again. In with the right direction of this, I'm going to call it feathers. <laughs> the direction indicates how the body is, the curve of the body. So there's almost a curve here. And this is where it's all about observation. Yes, getting the angle right there is very important. It's it? important here. Yeah, you can <coughs> see. And it's like a curve, there's a curve. And so you've really got to focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think it's so much difficult as observation and a little bit of time. You've got to spend the time with it. But you can start to see how it's going to build up. And obviously we're going to be bringing it down here. And then you go into a darker patch. Now the darker patch is, the way to do the darker patch is literally, I don't, I'm not going to fill all this in because it's going to take time, yeah? But the way to do this darker patch is just to have less and, and slightly darker dots of white. So you can, you can understand how it's working. It's just a case of building that up. Less dots here, where you've got areas where it's very, very, I mean, these are tiny, tiny, tiny. The nearer you're getting to the top, the tinier. It looks like it's just tone, but there's a little bit of texture there. Now, I want to just cover as well, the, putting the yellow in here. This is not just white, it's got yellow in it. I'm, so I'm still going to do the same as up there, where although, but I just wanted to point out that it's not just white. So let's just get some colour up, let's stick some white in. Don't worry if you go over the edges here, you can tidy them up later. Touch of the red in at the top. And once you start putting the reds and the yellows in, it does start to come together with the penguin. I'm actually really liking this and it is quite lemon yellow as well, almost lemon yellow. When you're working this close, it's quite easy to blend with this, you know, because you do small areas, so things are still wet. And for the yellow, you might want to add a touch of the white in there. It's amazing the tonal difference when you put that yellow in. It really, really shows up. Yeah, it starts to bring it out, doesn't it? Yeah. That's what you're meaning by tone, isn't it? The tonal difference is, whether it's light or dark, that's the thing that will make something stand out like it looks like it's 3D. And this is working. I'm going to go back to the whole painting. I think I've shown you techniques enough for you to see, and it's quite close work. Really look at the colours, because it, when something's in shadow, it often has a touch more blue. That's got a touch more blue than that has. It's in shadow rather than a shadow. These are shadows at the bottom. If you've used these colours, you could use a bit of purple to, to make the shadow. So it's got to have blue in it. Um, okay. I mean, that's gone quite dark under there, which I've just taken the colour from here and just extended it. But you want this, this shadow to be slightly lighter. But you can find, get your shape of your shadow from here. That'll work. I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have, please like and subscribe and help me to get to 100 subscribers. Okay, bye for now.